Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last few videos, you have been learning about how you can set up your Firestore database using SIFUI. You have learned about the create operation, read operation, update and delete operation. But now let's go ahead and learn about how we can store nested items, nested child's documents using SIFUI and Firestore database. So what we want to do is, let's go ahead and first run the app. And when I run the app, you'll see that we will have a couple of different items that will be displayed, a couple of different stores. Perfect, we have few stores. If I click on Walmart, I see the screen to update the Walmart. We don't really want to do this anymore. So what we want to do is allow the user to insert items, grocery items, to Walmart from this screen. And if I select Albertsons, then I should be able to add items to Albertsons store. Now there are multiple ways of adding items. And if you go to the documentation and select the structure data under Cloud Firestore, you will see that you can store documents in multiple collections, sub collections within documents and much more. Now we're going to start with creating nested data and documents. So you can see over here on the right hand side that we'll be storing really simple strings as an array in our store. So one store can have a property called items and those items can be grocery items like milk and bread, sugar, salt, whatever. So this is the technique we're going to use first. And then later on, I'll show you how you can use different techniques like sub collections and root collections and all that stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is go to store details view. And we don't really want to update the store. So all of this code, we don't really need. So let's go ahead and remove this part and remove the update button. We don't really need that. This is not what we're going to do over here. We're going to show you a list of different items, items that you have been, you have added to the store and provide the opportunity so you can add new items. This means that we don't really need the store name stuff. We can delete that or I'll just leave it because there is a update store function, which we will not need. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is create some sort of a UI to allow the, the user to add items. So let's go on the top. And since we're only asking for the name of the item, I'm going to add grocery item name. Great. Next, we want to make sure that we are looking at a navigation view, meaning that when we go to a particular store details page, we should know that which store details page are we talking about. Is it Albertsons? Is it Walmart? Is it HEB? And we can easily achieve that by simply providing some sort of a title. So I'm going to go over here and set the navigation title and I will say store.name. This means that when we actually land on the details page, the navigation title is going to tell us that which part of the application or which store we have selected. Let me go ahead and select Walmart. Now you can see big Walmart displaying on the top. So I know that if I'm going to be adding items, I'll be adding items to Walmart or Randall's, whichever store you select. Okay, great. So that part is done. The next part we need to do is we need to ask the user or we need to provide some sort of a text box so that user can enter the name. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Not very complicated, just a text field. Whenever we type something, something in the text field, it's going to go right here in the grocery item. And we're going to call save grocery item function, which doesn't really exist right now. So that part is done. Now, since we are adding an array or we'll be storing an array of items, grocery items for every store, it might be a good idea to go back to your store and make sure that our array is also handled over here. So I can say items, which are grocery items. 
this can be a string which is nullable because initially we may not have any item and I will simply assign it nil for now. I think if you go ahead and even create an empty array, we might be able to get past that also. Let's go ahead and create an empty array. Okay, we'll see if we need an empty array or if we need a nullable item. Okay, let's now let's go back to the store details view and we will go ahead and use save grocery item. But we first have to implement save grocery item. So private function save grocery item. And I'm going to say db.collection. The collection that we are talking about is called stores. Dot document. The document we're talking about can be extracted using the document ID. So there we go. And what we want to do is to update that particular document. So I'm just going to say update data. And the field that I want to update, that I want to create is items, which it, if it doesn't exist, then we're just going to create it. But if it already exists, I don't want to completely kill the field. I mean, what if we already have added three or four grocery items to a store? I don't want to remove those items. I just want to append to those items. So I'm just going to use something called a field value dot array union. An array union simply means if there are any items, this array will be concatenated, appended to that particular array. And I'm going to pass one string value to in an array, which will be grocery item name. So whatever we type for the item, which we are asking, which is right here. Now this is going to call and give us an error if there is any error. And if there is any error, we're going to unwrap it and simply go ahead and print it out. So error.localize description. Else we will, well, load all documents or load the documents and populate the items. So if everything is successful and we are able to save a nested item to our store, then we want to show the item by refreshing the grid, refreshing the table, and loading the documents or the item from the table. Now let's go ahead and call save grocery item. And we'll be able to see that if the item even gets to the database or not. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so right now you can see that none of the stores are getting displayed. And the reason that none of the stores are getting displayed is if we go to our store, it's not able to map these items because if you go back, you'll see that the only property that we have right now in all of these stores is simply the name. So there is no empty array. Now you can create an empty array when you create a store, that's fine, but maybe Creating it as a null might be a much better idea. So I'm going to go ahead and set it as nil as the initial value. Now let's go ahead and run it again. So we can see all the items. I'm going to go to Walmart and I'm going to go ahead and add an item. So let's say that I want to buy milk from Walmart. Okay, nothing displays over here. That's fine. Let's first go ahead and see if the milk was actually saved. And you can see right here that for Walmart, we were able to save the milk. Pretty cool, right? Let's go ahead and add some more item. I'm going to go ahead and say, what about eggs? And there we go. So we have milk, we have eggs, and it's for Walmart. If you go to different store, Albertsons and Randall's, you will not see that items list because we haven't really added anything to those items. So this is great. But now the question is, well, items are added, but how do we display it on the screen? Before we do that, I would like to add a spacer over here so that we can uh, move all the text field and the button on the top. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit complicated because what we want to do is we want to load the items again. Now we cannot really assign 
the store property anything because it is a let. And apart from that, even if you change it to var, you cannot assign anything because it's inside a structure. Uh, you have to mutate it. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to state var. And another thing that we are going to do is we are going to create another function, which will be load grocery items. Now you might be thinking, well, if we don't have any error, why can't I just add the items to an array? That's, that can work. The problem with that approach is that the only way to guarantee that the item has been added to the Firestore database is that if you fetch the item. So what I'm going to start with is by saying db.collection and going to pass in the collection, which is stores dot document. And for the document path, again, I'm going to go ahead and say store.id. This is give, going to give us a document path or a reference to the document. Once we have the reference to the document, we can actually get the document by saying ref.getDocument. And we'll get the document or we'll get the error. If let document equals to document, we're going to unwrap it. And if the document, while the document actually exists, then we can go ahead and try to convert the document, get the data as a store. We're going to cast it or we're going to decode it. That's why the store is decodable. And then we're going to assign it to the store, the session property. So store. And don't forget to assign the ID also. So document dot document ID. If however, nothing actually exists, then we can actually say that document does not exist. Document does not exist. Okay. Now we have to call load grocery items whenever we have successfully saved a nested item. So right over here, we can say load grocery items. And with that change, let's go ahead and run it and see how it works. So I'm going to go to Walmart. Well, it's not going to work because we haven't really printed out the items. So we forgot to do that. So let's go ahead and uh, actually print out the items, right? If let items equals to store.items, because remember store.items is actually nullable of string or an array of nullable of string. And we're going to unwrap it and then we can get all the items. And now I can say self because it's a string anyways. I will get the item, which is a grocery item. And then I will simply go ahead and display it in any control that I want. Right now, we're just going to use a text control. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to select Walmart. And we already see two items being populated because there, there are two items already in the Firestore database we added earlier on. Let's go ahead and add another item, bread. And there we go, bread is added. And let's go ahead and say water. Water is added. Now, if I try to go to different stores, you'll see that those stores don't have any item. Only Walmart has those items. So let's go to Albertsons and say chicken. Let's say meat. And finally, fish. All right, great. So now you can see Walmart has different items and Albertsons has different items. And if I go to Randall's, I can go ahead and have different items. Let's say toothpaste and paper and pen and some other stuff. But you get the idea. So this is how you will add nested items as an array. But one thing to remember about this nested item is that the only thing that we are adding for these nested item is very, very simple types, meaning it's always an array of strings. And this is fine for these simple cases, but for more complicated cases, maybe you want to say chicken, but how many chicken and what will be the price of chicken? So all of these things cannot be done using this particular using this particular technique. 
So we have to come up with a different way to make sure that we can accommodate a little bit more complicated items, items that are a little bit more custom and dynamic. So in the future videos, you will see those techniques. Thank you so much, and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to become a patron. Simply go to patreon.com slash azamsharp. You can sign up for the silver tier or the gold tier, and patrons will get additional benefits like more videos and ad-free content, and it will really help me a lot to grow the channel. Also, if you're interested, you can go to Udemy and check out a lot of my different courses. You can find a link to one of my best courses in YouTube description, so you can always check it out. And that's pretty much it. I really hope that you have enjoyed the video. Thank you.